What we're going to be going over here is the difference between the contribution margin versus gross margin. Now when we refer to the contribution margin here, that's used in cost analysis, whereas the gross margin, this is what we use in financial reporting. So first looking at our contribution margin, just to get the basic idea of what's going on here. This is where we're trying to determine some uh, income here or some costs and revenue based on some sales that we make. So the way we would be looking at that here is on this looking at a cost volume profit graph where we're going to have our revenues line moving up along here I'm showing it in green and then our costing line I'm showing that in red here. So with our costing this is where it's going to involve some fixed cost here and once we get up cover up our, our get to our fixed cost point here then we're going to have some variable cost on a per unit basis. So what we mean by the contribution margin here, this is just say for example our revenues here for each unit we sell we have a selling price or $50 here per unit of sales and then our variable cost uh, let's just say on a per unit basis here it's $34 here for each unit we sell. So the difference between our selling price of $50 variable cost here $34 is the contribution margin here on a per unit basis. So looking at the total contribution margin, that would be based on whatever sales quantities we have. So we just take that $16 here on a per unit basis, times whatever quantity we're selling, and that equals the total contribution margin. So what we're attempting to do here with this contribution margin or this looking at it in terms of our costing and our revenues here and our contribution margins, this is where we want to assess a risk of a loss here. So you can see here with our revenues here starting out at zero, it's increasing at a fa faster rate here than our variable cost. But because we start out at some fixed cost point here, we are very we have to cover those fixed costs here before we can start including our variable cost. So we we start out in this case we have a fixed cost here two thousand, and our variable costs would start at that point here. So at zero sales we have that two thousand dollars worth of fixed cost here and then for each unit of sales after that we're increasing uh, variable cost here thirty four dollars. So our total cost includes our fixed cost here plus our variable cost. So at some point here our total cost line here variable cost plus our fixed cost equals our revenues and that would be some break-even point. So the point is here uh, up until you hit that break-even point here, you'd be operating at a loss, and after that, you'd be operating at a profit here. So you got to sell at least as many units as at your break-even point here. You got to sell at least those number of units before you start generating any profit. Any sales below that, you'd be generating a loss. So what we're doing here, uh, we're really trying to again assess the risk of a loss here by not at least not meeting our break-even point here to generate any profit. So what we're saying is if you have low sales here, you're going to have a high risk. What we're doing here with this contribution margin here, when we'll look at it on our for our comparison purposes for between our gross margin here, uh, this the contribution margin really indicates how much revenue is available to cover our fixed cost. Beyond that, it's how much prop how much profit we're generating between our the difference between our revenues and our total costs. Okay, so let's go down and let's look at our comparison here. So I've got it laid out here where we got I'm gonna lay it out here in income statement format here. So I've got the contribution margin shown over here, and this this our gross margin method here would be shown over here. And again, the contribution margin that's used in our cost analysis, gross margin in our financial reporting. Now with the contribution margin here, this is where, again, for both of these we're going to be starting out with some revenues here and we want to determine our operating income here after we subtract out our variable costs and our fixed costs. Okay, so for comparison purposes, let's just look, start with our contribution margin here. This is, and look at it. So we're going to have some revenues. Let's say it's $1,000 here in revenues. Now, to get down to the contribution margin itself, we have to subtract out, and I'm looking at it in terms of a manufacturing company here. You could uh, use it for other different companies, but we'll use it in terms of a manufacturing company. Okay, so we start out with a revenues here of $1,000, and then we have to subtract out all our variable costs. 
are, and that would, and when I say all, that means all the variable costs. That would be our variable costs here for manufacturing the product and our variable costs for the non-manufacturing portion that we'd have here. So totaling those together, you're going to come up with some total variable cost. In this case, it's $520. And you subtract that here from your revenues. And the difference gives you the contribution margin here of $480. So what we mean by when we talked about how that contribution margin here indicating how much revenues is available to cover the cost, that's exactly what we have here. The contribution margin here is $480. And that is the amount that we would have available to cover our, all our fixed cost here. And whatever is remaining gives us our operating income. So continuing on here, this is where, starting with, now we have our contribution margin of $480. Now we have to subtract out all our fixed costs for manufacturing the product here, plus all our fixed costs of non-manufacturing that's included here in our product. So subtract, totaling those up, we're going to come up with $298. So subtracting that from our contribution margin here of $480, we have an operating income here of $182. We could do this in terms of thousands of dollars. Okay, so now let's look at our gross margin here. Okay, we start out with a revenue, same revenues here as we had with the contribution margin, $1,000. But this is where the difference comes into play here. So uh, to get down to our gross margin here, which we're comparing to our contribution margin here, is that we, we'd have to subtract our cost of goods sold. So what is included in the cost of goods sold here when you're talking about financial reporting? Well, in this case, uh, comparing it to our what we did for our contribution margin, we'd have our variable manufacturing cost, a $250, plus we'd have to add the fixed uh, cost here for manufacturing. So both that would have to be included here. What, what we had here below the line here for our contribution margin method of $160, $160 here is included above the line here to determine your gross margin here of 160. So totaling those together, and it, we're talking about all the manufacturing costs, both the variable and the fixed manufacturing costs. So totaling those together, we come up with $410, subtracting that from our revenues, our gross margin here is $590. And you can make the comparison here to the contribution margin here at $480. Simply the difference is uh, what you how you in, what you include as manufacturing costs versus non-manufacturing costs. So continuing on here, uh, we have our gross margin here, 590. Then our non all our non-manufacturing costs. Now this is where we would uh, that would be the 270 dollars here that we used uh, we were using here as our in our contribution margin here our variable cost for all the non-manufacturing variable costs that would be included down here, $270. So you can see the difference right there. Plus we would uh, add in the fixed cost here for non-manufacturing cost of $138. So total amount here is going to be $408. Subtract that from your gross margin here of $590. You get an operating income of $182. Same uh, that we had here for the contribution margin. But just to understand what's going on here. Let's just review it one more time. For our contribution margin method, this is the case here. To determine our contribution margin, we subtracted out all our uh, variable costs, both the manufacturing variable costs and all our non-manufacturing variable costs to arrive at our contribution margin here, subtracting it from our revenues. And then to determine our operating income here, we took all of our fixed cost here for manufacturing and all our fixed cost, non-manufacturing cost, total those together and subtract our contribution margin to get our operating income. Now, comparing it to, again, to our gross margin, this is the case here to determine our gross margin. We took all our manufacturing costs, both our fixed manufacturing cost and our variable manufacturing cost here as our cost of goods sold, subtracted that from our revenues to uh, determine our gross margin here. And then we took all our non-manufacturing costs, those would be the variable cost, non-manufacturing costs up here of that 270 plus, uh, again, all our non-manufacturing costs, that was our non -manu uh, variable non-manufacturing cost plus our fixed cost, non-manufacturing cost here. And total those together, subtract our firm gross margin to get our operating income. So you just to make the comparison, uh, 
contribution margin, you just lump all your variable costs, both manufacturing and non-manufacturing together here to determine your contribution margin. Whereas with the gross margin method, you take all your manufacturing costs, both the variable portion here and the fixed portion here uh, as your cost of goods sold to determine your gross margin. And then the other thing is here for with our contribution margin, we took all our fixed costs here, both manufacturing and non-manufacturing here, uh, subtracted that from our contribution margin to determine our operating income. Whereas with our gross margin method, this is where we took all our non-manufacturing costs here, both our variable non-manufacturing costs and our fixed uh, uh, cost here, non-manufacturing cost here, subtracted that from our gross margin uh, uh, to determine our operating income. In either case, we come up with the same operating income. It's just a matter of uh, how you handle your manufacturing costs, both the variable cost and your fixed manufacturing cost, and your uh, non-manufacturing cost versus your manufacturing cost. So re just remember, this is based on a manufacturing company. Okay, so just to expand the now to continue on using some comparative analysis here to determine how a change would affect both our contribution versus our gross margin method. So continuing on with our example here, I'm showing the contribution margin calculations over here, gross margin on this side. Okay, let's say for example, we had that fixed cost here of 160, could be 160,000 here, and we're changing it here. Uh, fixed manufacturing cost here down to 50, from 160 down to 50. So looking at our contribution margin here, that's a below the line change here. So it isn't going to affect our contribution margin here of 480 that we calculated. All it's going to do here is affect our operating income here because it, we're reducing our fixed manufacturing costs. So our operating income is going to go up from 182,000 to 292,000. So really looking at, is your change affecting, is it above the line change or below the line change when you're looking at the contribution margin? And the same would go for your gross margin. So let's look at the a case here for our calculating our gross margin. Again, we changed our fixed manufacturing costs here from 160 down to 50. So that certainly is gonna affect our cost of goods sold here. And that's an above the line change here in our gross margin. So our cost of goods sold is gonna go down from 410,000 down to 300,000. So our gross margin is gonna go up. We're sitting here at 590, uh, 590,000 say, and it's going up to 700,000. So we have an increase here of 20% in our gross margin. Now comparing that to our contribution margin, we had no increase. It stayed the same because it was a below the line change. For gross margin, it was an above the line change here. So it affected our gross margin. So you can see how you could use these, uh, look at these two different uh, layouts here, these uh, fin uh, the cost analysis versus financial reporting the income statement type layouts and how you could make the comparison here simply by looking at different changes here in your variable costs, your fixed costs, and whether or not they're above or below the line here. So going back to our example here, our gross margin again increased here to seven, from 590,000 to 700,000. And uh, the fact is our operating income uh, went up as well, just as it did uh, using our contribution margin was above the line change, but it did uh, increase our operating income from 182,000 to 292,000. So ultimately the operating income stayed the same. The only thing that changes is either your contribution margin or your gross margin amounts. And you can look at them in terms of percents or dollar figures or so forth. But what you wanna do here is look at, is it an above the line change or below the line change? when you're making a comparison between your contribution margin calculations and your gross margin calculations. And if you looked at, say for example here, using our contribution margin, if our, in this case, our fixed uh, variable cost for non-manufacturing costs, say that went down here. Well, it would have changed the contribution, our, it would have changed our contribution margin amount here, but it wouldn't have changed the gross margin method because for the gross margin method, it was a below the line change. So really that's what you're looking at. Uh, well, if you're gonna look at the comparison and you have to do some dollar comparison or percentage comparisons, just lay out your, uh, look at your income statement here and uh, you look at your revenues and your costs and your operating income 
to determine your operating income. And then you can look at it. Are these changes above or below the line? How do they affect your contribution margin? In this case, the contribution using a contribution income statement or the gross margin here using your income statement layout here for your gross margin. And you can check cross-check between the gross margin percentages and dollar figures versus your contribution margin percentages and dollar figures. Just remember, are they below or above the line changes and how do they affect the other, uh, looking at the contribution margin, how does it affect the gross margin and vice versa, how does it affect the gross margin here? Uh, if you have a change, it, if you have a change here in your gross margin, how does it affect your contribution margin based on those changes. Okay, so that'll pretty much summarize our topic.